Welcome to 949 Racing and Super Miata. I'm going to give you a tour of the uh, fire system on Crusher. We're in the midst of doing some electrical work here, so we have some other junk laying here. I'm getting, putting a spare battery in. If one battery was good, we thought two battery would be better. So, Anyway, this system is built for us uh, by Tom Turner at uh, Emergency Suppression Systems, otherwise known as ESS. It's a foam system. Uh, that's uh, AFFF, I think. Aqueous foam something or other. Um, we chose foam over halon for a few reasons. And this is really a philosophical question. You know, everybody has their own arguments. Um, my greatest concern um, is based on basically the type of injuries that are common in club racing and motorsports when, when, uh, uh, from fire. Uh, drivers are usually not coming in contact with the flame. They're usually... Uh, burnt from uh, convection. In other words, they have their glove and their glove gets burnt, but they never actually come in physical contact with the flame. Um, it's just the heat that's inside the car that burns them. It's like if you put your hand in an oven mitt and stick it inside into a, an oven, you don't come in contact with the flame, but you get burnt from the heat being convected through the um, conducted through the glove. So we, if we can find a way to absorb heat out of the cockpit here, we can uh, help reduce the chance of uh, driver injury from, uh, from heat, from flame. So that's why we chose the foam. The foam absorbs a lot of heat during the time that it's dispersed in the cockpit, where Halon doesn't really absorb any heat whatsoever. Also, Halon basically blows out the window if the car's spinning and you have open windows. In a car that's closed, Halon's definitely the way to go, like a funny car or something like that. The driver, the guy has his own uh, oxygen supply, but here, um, the guy has to breathe in the interior, so the foam, I think, is a better solution. Now, it can potentially damage electronics, but frankly, I'm not too worried about the car. I'm worried about the driver, so that's why I chose foam. So we have uh, the biggest bottle I have, which I believe is a five-pound bottle here. <coughs> and we have, uh, I think, six nozzles. Uh, we have one nozzle back here. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. That's uh, back there in the corner. That is uh, aimed at the filler neck. And uh, there's a thermocouple there that will sense uh, temperatures over, I believe it's 180 degrees, and automatically trigger the system. Um, if that system is triggered, this little electronic control box that we showed at the beginning here will send a signal to our race pack smart wire, which will then shut down basically all the electronics in the car. Um, it will leave the ABS turned on, it will leave the radio turned on, and it will leave the lights turned on, but everything else will shut off automatically if the system triggers. The driver doesn't have to do that. It will also set off a warning light just underneath our race pack IQ3 dash. Kind of hard to see there, but there's a very bright LED light there that will trigger. But the driver will not have any trouble knowing that the system has gone off because he'll be covered in foam and it's like, time to get out, guy. Um, so what do we have here? We have um, a nozzle there you saw that's underneath that bulkhead. Um, aimed at the filler neck. And then we have another one up here above the driver. It's kind of hard to see. Let me turn on the dome lights. Let's see if the power's on. Yes, the power's on. Got our dome lights here. That's our, that's above the driver's head. And then we have another one sitting right up there above the driver's knee. If we go out here in the engine compartment, we have another one at the cold side of the engine. It's basically aimed at the fuel rail. See that guy there? And over here on the hot side of the engine, we have one the hot side of the engine. It's really, you know, massive engine failure. Rod comes out the side, oil gets on the header. Boom! You got an oil fire. So that's where we that's where we like to have our our nozzles. Now you notice I had a an electronic automatic trigger. Well, what about the manual trigger? So we have two manual triggers. We have one that the driver can reach right in the cockpit, it's right behind the shifter. That's about as quick as you can get to it. But that might be hard for the corner worker to reach. So we have an auxiliary pull up here on the A pillar and of course the fire decal there to let the corner worker know that it's there. So that is the fire system we have uh, custom built for us by uh, Tom at ESS and uh, we are actually going to add another thermocouple up here above the driver's head and this one will be set for about the same temperature as the one that's in the bulkhead but either one of those will trigger the system. We have to put an electronic splitter in it. So. Um, Fairly complex system, but um, in its basic function, it's very, very simple and very reliable. And uh, we're very happy with the way it goes into the car and protects the driver. So if you have any more questions about that, you want to go to ESSfire.com. That's uh, Emergency Suppression Systems. And uh, talk to Tom, and he will hook you up.
Thanks.